I think all of you know I have a special attachment to Southeast Asia. Uh, as a boy, I lived in Jakarta. My mother spent years working in villages to help women improve their lives. So Southeast Asia helped shape who I am and how I see the world. And as president, I've made it a pillar of my foreign policy to make sure that the United States is more deeply engaged in the Asia Pacific region, including Southeast Asia. And I want to welcome the ambassadors uh, from across ASEAN. Thank you for being here and for your partnership. Give them a big round of applause. So I've deepened America's ties with Southeast Asia because your region uh, is critical to our shared future. Uh, there are more than 600 million people who live in the ASEAN countries, and you ref reflect an incredible diversity of faiths and ethnic groups and backgrounds and cultures. And that diversity has, has to be celebrated and it has to be protected. Uh, we have incredible economic engines like Singapore. We've got growing economies like the Philippines and Vietnam and Malaysia. Uh, and we can see growth that, that is lifting people out of poverty and creating more jobs and trade and opportunity for all of our countries. We've seen a historic democratic transition in Indonesia. We've got elections coming later this year in Myanmar. Communities in Laos and, and Brunei are working for development that's sustainable and protecting the environment. And we're seeing new commitments to the education of young women and girls, as is true in Cambodia. You know, the people of Thailand played a critical role in the global response uh, to the earthquake in Nepal. Uh, and we are uh, mindful of uh, the king of Thailand's uh, uh, health uh, issues lately, and, and we uh, wish him the best, and uh, our hopes and prayers are with him. So Southeast Asia is stepping up. It's on the move. And today, America's relationship with the region is stronger than ever. I'm proud to be the first American president to meet regularly with all 10 ASEAN leaders. I will continue to do so uh, until I'm no longer president. We've strengthened our alliances, including with the Philippines. We've forged new partnerships with Indonesia and, and Malaysia and Vietnam. Our trade with ASEAN has been growing. We're pursuing the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We're working with ASEAN to bind the region more closely together and confront shared challenges and uphold international rules and norms, including freedom of navigation, uh, to and, and to ensure that disputes are resolved peacefully. At the moment, uh, several of our nations are working to rescue uh, desperate uh, Rohingya migrants who are at sea, which reflects our commitment to the security and dignity and human rights of every human being. But, Despite all the work I've been doing and the ambassadors have been doing, building these stronger ties is not just the work of government. They have to be rooted in partnerships between our people, and especially young people like you. All across Southeast Asia, almost two-thirds of the population is under 35 years old. So this is a young part of the world. Technology is giving you more power, uh, to communicate and to organize like never before. In Vietnam, tens of millions of people are connected on Facebook. Across the region, you are civil society leaders working for democracy and human rights and religious tolerance. You are entrepreneurs who are turning your ideas into new businesses, activists fighting for the environment and against uh, climate change. And that's the power that young people have the, and the spirit of optimism and idealism that you represent. So you're inspiring to me. And I've made it clear that America wants to be your partner. We want to help you succeed. So two years ago, we, uh, we launched the Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative, uh, YSEALI, to help empower young people like you to give you more of the skills and resources and networks that you need to turn your ideas into action. And since then, we've offered workshops, online networking, exchanges, professional development, hands-on training. And today, Waisili uh, Network includes nearly uh, 35,000 young people like you. Last year in Myanmar, at the town hall meeting that uh, Zim Zimar mentioned, I announced our fellowship program to bring young leaders from across the region to the United States to help develop their skills. And for this first class of 75, more than 1,000 people applied. The competition was intense. Today, I'm proud to welcome you as the first class of YC Lee Fellows. Uh, we're very proud of you. 
And, you know, I've had a chance to read about some of you and the amazing things uh, that you've, you've been doing. And I suspect that uh, Niema uh, Remagoso from the Philippines, uh, there she is right there. <laughs> she spoke uh, for a lot of you. She said, am I dreaming or is this really happening? <laughs> so it's really happening. <laughs> you come from all 10 ASEAN nations, from capital cities and rural towns. You represent different faiths and backgrounds and different beliefs. Obviously, there are men and women here. In fact, the majority are women, because one of the best measures of a country's success is whether it empowers women and girls. And you're all bound together by a common belief that you have the talent and the drive and the power to improve the lives of your fellow human beings. So for the last five weeks, you've been all across America. You've experienced state legislatures and city councils. You've seen how our day-to-day -day democracy works. You've worked at nonprofits learning how to organize and advocate for change. Uh, you've in interned in some American companies, seeing how to build and manage a business. Uh, and I want to thank all of our leaders uh, and partners who are here. Uh, we've got universities and academic institutions. We've got businesses, all who've been very generous in their support of this overall process. So you've been experiencing America. Uh, some of you were very lucky and had a chance to go to my home state of Hawaii. Uh, I heard, I'd heard that some of you tried to hula dance. Uh, some of you went to my hometown of Chicago uh, and you saw uh, American ingenuity at its best, uh, including I hear that you saw uh, ATMs that uh, give cupcakes. And I also know that Americans have learned from you as well. Uh, they, you shared your culture and traditions and foods. Uh, you discovered uh, American foods like Jell-O. I hear somebody had Jell-O, which I was very excited about that. Um, and the friendships and the understanding uh, that you have forged uh, will help to uh, bring our countries together for a long time. And soon you'll return home. Each of you has developed a project, an action plan, and you'll take what you've learned here and put it into practice. And we're going to be with you uh, during this process as you build your ventures, expand your networks, uh, and mentoring uh, young people that are coming behind you. Uh, we're going to welcome 500 fellows like you every single year. So this may be the end of your visit to America, but you've really begun this process of building partnerships that will last a lifetime. And we want you, you to make sure that you are realizing your dreams. I just want to take a couple of examples. Uh, we've got uh, Seth Suwon uh, Visal. Where, where's uh, Seth? Here's Seth. So in, in, in Cambodia, Seth works with Parliament. So in Tulsa, he witnessed city government at work, the legislative process in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and Seth, we're proud uh, to be your partner as you strive to ensure that governments deliver for all uh, of the Cambodian people. Uh, we have uh, Mohamed Dafib. Where's uh, Mohamed? There he is. He's an advocate for the environment in Indonesia. And uh, at the East-West Center, what, what, there aren't two of you, is there? <laughs> The, uh, the, uh, so at the East West Center in Hawaii, uh, he learned uh, new ways to empower citizens and affect change. So we're proud to be your partner. Uh, together we can promote sustainable development and help, our, uh, help the next generation meet the urgent challenges of climate change. Uh, we've got uh, Kain Muwong. There's Kain, and uh, is a doctor. Uh, in Myanmar, where she uh, offers free surgeries to children uh, uh, for cleft, uh, cleft palates and, and lips and uh, gives them a new smile and new confidence. So we're very proud. At the Oklahoma University School of Community Medicine, she focused on ways to expand outreach uh, and free clinics. And we are so proud to be your partner uh, working uh, for the health and dignity of children across Myanmar. Although I have to say that uh, uh, you are the youngest doctor I've ever uh, I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, she looks like she's 14. <laughs> it's, it's very impressive. So, thank you. And, and, and where's uh, uh, Pern uh, Fansiri? Here's Pern from Thailand, a tireless fighter against human trafficking. And at the city manager's office in Lee's Summit, Missouri, she saw how a community takes a comprehensive approach to social services. So we're proud to be your partner in standing up for the rights of women and children. Uh, we have to end the outrage of human trafficking, and we so appreciate the work that you do. 
So th this just gives you an example of the incredible talent uh, and commitment that these young people represent. And I want to close with a quick story that captures uh, the spirit of our work together. Uh, Tong Von Son Sampan uh, is here from Laos. Where's, uh, please stand. So the, uh, uh, she's here from Laos. Uh, in Atlanta, she visited the memorial and center honoring uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And she was struck by one of Dr. King's quotes, which says, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And that prompted her to think about the true meaning of leadership. And she wrote something very beautiful that uh, I want everybody to hear. Leadership is inside you, she said. Everyone can be a leader because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to lead. You don't need to know more than the others. All you need is a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Well, that's pretty good. So, so that's, that's what I see in all of you. Uh, that's why I believe so strongly. That, uh, that's why I'm confident that all of you will be extraordinary leaders, already are doing great work in your communities and your countries with hearts full of grace and souls generated by love. Uh, and you will continue to have a friend and partner in the United States of America. This weekend is Memorial Day, a time to pay tribute to all our men and women in uniform who've ever given their lives so that we can live in freedom and security. This year, the holiday is especially meaningful. It's the first Memorial Day since our war ended in Afghanistan. On Monday, at Arlington Cemetery, I'll join our Gold Star families, veterans, and their loved ones to remember all our fallen heroes 